If you're anything like me, you might not be a patient gardener. And when it comes to growing fruit trees, patience is usually what people recommend. But today we're going to be doing something different, something new to me. It's called a multi-year hole. The idea behind it is that instead of just digging a hole, putting the tree straight in, not doing much of anything at all, we're actually going to be amending and building a quite large hole to plant these bare root trees. Now, conventional wisdom does lean towards do nothing, just dig a hole, put it in the ground, walk away. And that works very well. You don't have any problems with that, but I'm not patient. I wanna get fruit as soon as possible. I wanna get really good fruit as soon as possible. So that is why we're doing the multi-year hole. I'll explain everything about it, including how to prepare it, how to dig it, and also how to select, plant, and prune a bare root tree as soon as you put it in the ground. So let's get started because we have a lot of digging to do. I've already got my bare root over there soaking in a bucket of water. Before we start our multi-year hole, I wanna quickly talk to you about what a bare root tree is. It is just like the name implies, a tree with bare roots. There's no soil on it. What they do is they grow these out in a field for, I don't know, two to three years. Then they dig them up and then they leave them without any soil as bare roots. The advantage of this is that you have way more selection variety when they do this. They normally ship them out to nurseries at the beginning or before spring. And also it's a little bit cheaper. Oftentimes you could get these bare root trees for something like $40 or even get a four-in-one multi-grafted tree like the one I have back there for only like 60 bucks. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that means in a moment. But the cool thing about this is that you have a tree that's attached to a rootstock. So right here, the part where the roots are, this is a tree that is very resistant to many diseases. It might control the height of the tree. It gives you much more control on the fruit tree that you actually wanna grow. And then you have your graft point right there. And that is where the actual fruit tree that you wanna eat is actually attached. So that is what a bare root is. It's nothing scary. It might look a little bit scary, but we're gonna cover everything you need to know about how to plant this successfully. So now we gotta prep the soil and dig a big hole. So this year I had a New Year's resolution, which was to start a garden journal. And I actually wrote all the steps down for what we're doing today and actually even drew, oops, other side, a little diagram of exactly what this looks like. I'll probably refer to this diagram as we go through the steps so you guys have a nice visual, but don't worry, we'll be covering everything you need to know. Now, before we actually clear this area of mulch, I did pick through some debris that was already existing there. There's a lot of rocks, random tiles that have just been here forever. And I wanted to talk really quickly about why I have this sitting in the bucket of water. When you get your bare root tree, the trees oftentimes have roots that are a little bit dry. And so soaking them in a bucket of water for two to six hours max is plenty to make sure those tree roots are nice and hydrated before we plop them in the ground. So before you dig your hole and do your prep work, get your tree soaking in a bucket of water or whatever you can fit it in. But now I need to go get a rake and let's get this whole area prepped up to get this hole dug. So now I have the area cleared out and I wanna mention a couple things. As you can see around me, I'm surrounded by really bad weeds. I have English ivy over here. Behind me, I have bird of paradise and I have some bougainvillea and asparagus fern mixed in with also another invasive, the pride of Madeira. These are, some of them are actually great plants. I love the pride of Madeira. Everything else I'm going to be battling for quite a while but I think it's worth it to get a fruit tree in my garden. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out is north is that way. So as the sun crosses, it's right there at the moment, all the shadows of this tree are gonna go behind me. They're not gonna be cast into the garden or slow any of my plants down by blocking any light. So this is a great place for a fruit tree, except for all these little invasive plants around me. Now for the multi-year hole, it's critical feature is actually its width. It is going to be a three foot wide hole. In terms of depth, it's going to be only two feet. I guess two feet is actually pretty deep if you think about it. And what we're trying to do here is create an area that is extremely hospitable to the fruit tree to grow and thrive. Now, again, if you have great soil and you have patience, then you don't have to do any of this. This is actually something I've never tried before. So we'll see how well it works. What we're going to do is find the center of this tree. So all I'm going to do here, take my tape measure from my hand to the, my other hand, it's three feet and the center is going to be 18 inches. So right there. So I wanna see how it looks this way. That's good. And the other thing I wanna consider is this tree is going to be at least three feet wide, if not more. So over here, I wanna be able to access it as best as I can, but this is probably the most ideal location. I might even go actually a little bit this way. Let's do that. So that the center will be at that point. So what I'm going to do now, take my bamboo stake here, and plunge it. It's hoping it'd go deeper. If I know my yard, there's probably going to be a bunch of rocks, bricks, and other detritus buried in here. So I'm prepared to find a whole bunch of random stuff. So what I'm going to do next is mark off my three feet. Right there is my three foot line on that side. And then right here is going to be the end. 
Now, since I have English Ivy in this area, I'm actually probably going to dig it a little bit wider so I can make sure that I am picking out any rootlets of that English Ivy that I see. In fact, right here, this is a English Ivy root and I don't want to see that in this area. English Ivy is extremely, extremely invasive. So I'm going to be digging a little bit extra deep on this side just to account for that. But the overall plan here is three feet wide in every direction and only two feet deep. You might've noticed that I've been scooping out the soil and putting it into a separate tote. I'll talk more about that in a second, but that is the topsoil. It has more organic matter, has a darker color to it because it is richer in organic matter, and it's generally going to have a lot more nutrients. Now, what I have in my hand here is the subsoil. That is the more clay rich, it's more sticky, it's compacted. This is the more subpar soil. It tends to be deeper down, why it's called subsoil. We're going to be separating this as well. And again, that's going to be part of this multi-year process. We're going to be doing some work to both of these soils, but I just wanted to point out why I've separated the topsoil into this bucket. I'm gonna bring my wheelbarrow over and put the subsoil in that. All right, guys, this right here is the subsoil. You can see it's very clay rich. Here's the topsoil. It's much darker, has a wonderful crumb to it. I can't even hold it in my hand without it falling apart. And this is the stuff I'm talking about that is very clay rich, compacted, and it can hold a lot of nutrients, but it's also hard for plants to grow into when they're young. So this is the stuff we're going to be separating for sure. So here is a transect of the soil and up here is the topsoil. You could see it has a much more crumbly like structure up here. It's filled with sand, organic matter, things like that. This is where the drainage is. If you go down deep, it turns into pure clay. So it's much more slick, sticky, compacted. And all these little white dots here are actually the tree roots of the bird of paradise. So what I'll probably do is dig another trench behind this hole, cut those roots one more time, and then they shouldn't be able to invade, at least for some time, before I prune that guy. But that is basically what you're looking at. Up here is the topsoil, and down here is the subsoil. We're getting pretty close here. I have this foot definitely three feet wide, and I have it at the very center, probably close to two feet deep. Now what we're going to be doing in the end is discarding something like 40% of the subsoil, especially this deep down sticky clay stuff. So now what I'm going to start doing is filling five gallon buckets and carting it away to my side yard, dumping it there to make space in this hole so we could actually amend the rest of the subsoil that we separated into the wheelbarrow. All right guys, looks like we've hit our two foot mark. This is quite the hole. I'm actually gonna <laughs> hop into it here. This is the type of hole we're building. A very, very well amended big hole for this fruit tree. The idea is this first year, this entire hole should be populated with the roots from the fruit tree that we're putting in. Got my handy diagram out because we are ready to move on to the next step. We've dug this gigantic pit of a hole. It is quite impressive, I have to say. And we've removed the subsoil, separated from the topsoil. But now we need to do some amending and forking. So let me get a couple ingredients. The first one's going to be compost. The other one's going to be garden soil which I'll tell you what that is in a moment. The first thing we're going to do now that we have the hole ready is take a digging fork and stab all the sides of the hole. The idea behind this is that it's going to help open up the walls so that the roots can shoot right through. So again, all I'm doing is taking my fork, impaling the soil just like that and wiggling it a little bit. This is just to crack the side walls and just make it a little bit more friendly so that the tree doesn't end up spiraling. If this was a totally smooth hole, you might end up getting a pot-like situation with root boundness and spiraling of the roots. So doing this, it's just insurance to make sure that really that tree root is going to shoot out into all the soil around us and not just spiral around in this perfect hole that we made for it. We want it to explore, so we don't want to make it too comfortable and we don't want to make it too smooth. So that is why we're doing this. According to our recipe, what we need to do is amend the subsoil now. We did remove about 40%. I took away maybe four or five buckets and we're going to be replacing it with garden soil. In this case, this is garden soil that I dug out of the garden right over there. When I dug the swales for my rain capture system, I made the conscious decision to save it. And that is what we're using today. The reason why you want to use garden soil and for sure not anything called like potting soil, raised bed mix, anything like that, is that garden soil is made out of inorganic material. That is things like clay, sand, silt, all that sort of stuff that doesn't really break down. Whereas compost, which we are gonna be using some of, this is my homemade compost I'm very proud of, is actually an organic material, not like an organic vegetable, but an organic material in the sense that it's made out of plant debris, carbon, things like that. So this will break down over time, but since we have such a clay rich soil here, when it breaks down, it should help break up that clay and it shouldn't cause too much sinking. We're only gonna put 20% max of compost in this. If we put too much, that might rot and cause a lot of settling for that tree. 
So now what I'm going to do is do all the mixing in the hole because I really don't have anywhere else to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and dump some of this compost in, some of this uh, garden soil that I saved from my gardens, and then we'll mix in some of that subsoil that I have in the wheelbarrow right there. I think it'll be much easier to do it in here rather than trying to do it in a wheelbarrow where there honestly isn't enough space. Now is the moment of truth. Let us fit this tree. What I'm going to be looking at here is the direction of the roots, first of all, make sure I have space, and the height of the tree itself. So let me get my handy shovel again. It's gonna be my height stick. And what we want is this portion right here to be beneath the shovel, and that is just right. So at this level, I'm actually very comfortable planting this. And now all I'm going to do is cover these roots up with this amended soil. I actually feel really good about this. I like the positioning of the branches for the most part and I really like how it is upright in the place that it is. Once I stood up, I realized that this branch was facing the back. That's not what I wanted, I wanted it to face forward. So I did turn it a little bit in here, had to dig it out again. Make sure we're still at good height, we are. And now I'm gonna bury it again. Remember, this tree was dug up very aggressively in order to be sold as a bare root already. It could take a little bit of a beating. We don't have to baby it. Now, of course, I'm not gonna try to <laughs> cut all these roots off. I'm being careful there. But other than that, it could take somewhat of a beating and do just fine. So don't be too scared when you're planting these things. You don't need to treat them like they are precious. Now at this stage, I feel totally comfortable just burying it entirely, and we could finally move on to the next step. It's starting to get dark here. And by the way, the reason I'm doing this right now is because we're about to get another huge storm here in San Diego. I wanna make sure that I do this before the soil gets too wet to work. If you wait for the water to fully saturate your soil and it gets all soggy and then you dig, you're gonna make a mess. You're gonna compact the soil. It's not gonna be a good time. So you wanna do it before the rain or a little bit after the rain. As you can see, the soil is not dry, but it's not so wet and sticky that it's like clumping together. So here is the bucket of water I had the bare root tree soaking in. If you are planting a tree and then you don't know if there's rain for sure coming the next day like I do, you want to water this very deeply. It's okay if it gets muddy, if it, if it gets sloppy, messy, it's fine. You want to make sure that this has as much water as it could possibly get at the beginning because that's going to settle the soil into the roots, remove any air pockets, and ensure that there's no part of this tree that is sitting dry. So what I'm going to do for now is just go ahead and drown it in this bucket of water that I had it soaking in. Now, since we just dug the soil, as you could see, it's not very good at accepting water yet. That is not a surprise. But once it gets settled in and the soil starts to really become its own, the water will soak in nice and easy. So if you're doing this, just get a hose on the very low setting and trickle it in. Don't just dump a bucket of water like I did. But the main goal here is to, again, make sure that all this air that we might have introduced gets settled out by the water. So all I'm doing right now is wiggling the tree and the idea behind that is that if there's any air or like open pockets, I want that water to rush in there and fill it with soil. So I do see a little bit of water infiltrating here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get real dirty and make sure that those roots are well surrounded by soil and water. So to build a moat, all we're going to do is just pile up some soil, especially on the part where we know that it's draining from. So that's this side. And this will help capture the rainwater, similar to a swale, but just a miniature swale around this tree alone. Here we are at the final step before pruning, and that is that we're going to be dumping some compost. Now is the time that we're actually going to be fertilizing. So you wanna go with something that has a higher nitrogen number. At the beginning, a fruit tree really is using mostly nitrogen. This one is a 433. It does have mycorrhizal inoculant in there, which is perfect for fruit trees because I want to get as much mycorrhizal action on those roots as possible. And now the final topper, which is mulch. So I'm going to pile it pretty high. But again, we're going to make sure that there's no mulch up against the base of the tree itself. All right, guys, we have done all of this. The compost, the fertilizer, the mulch, all the hole digging. Still got some dirty hands. Now we actually need to prune up and shape this tree. Now remember, this is a three and one. So I have three different varieties here all grafted onto the same tree and you make some decisions about how to cut it. Now, the main thing that you're trying to prune at the beginning is any damaged and diseased branches. Right here, I have a pretty bad crack in this trunk and I know it's just gonna get worse over time. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And again, I'm trying to do that 45 degree angle just like that. And I have a bud right underneath here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go to this bud right here. 
Every time you have a bud, a little bump on the tree, that is going to be where all the new growth is coming from. So if I cut it and I see this bump right down here, what's going to happen is that bud is going to grow outwards towards me. It's going to become the dominant bud on this branch. So now if I come up to this one, I am similarly trying to train something not to go in the same direction. I wanna give some variety here. I have a bud right up here on my finger, so I think I might actually go with that one for now. Now again, you will be pruning this probably later in the season again. So this is a initial cut to do most of the damage here. All right, so this graft is now shaped. I'm pretty pleased with that. Now I have to work my way over here. This branch has grown all sorts of funky here. What I'll do is I'll remove one of them, just like so, and I'll leave this one as the dominant. When I say dominant, what I'm referring to is that the bud that's at the very end of the shoot here is going to get all the hormones. Actually, in thinking of that, I'm going to remove this one. So this is my dominant branch. The furthest, highest up bud is going to get all the hormones for growth, and that's going to dictate the majority of it. So this one, and speaking of that, this is my height here. I want to get pretty close there. So I have a bud right here facing me. That's going to be the one I want to be dominant. Still feels bad. That one's gone. So for now, what I'm going to do is just kind of do a quick cut on it. And then once I space it, I'll have a better idea. But I already don't like that, so. And then this branch has a lot of dead up here. So let's do one more cut right there. Obviously, it feels pretty dumb to pay for a tree and then cut most of it off. But this is for the long-term benefit of controlling the height so it doesn't get too tall and also dictating where the growth is. We don't want all these branches crowding into each other because that's just not going to be a good time. So at this point, I feel really good. There are only two things left to do. One of the last things I got here is a random piece of wood that I just cut a little bevel into, a little sort of notch. What we're going to do here, I just got a little piece of scrap towel here just so I don't damage the bark on the tree. Just like this, I'm gonna put it right inside and then I'm gonna push that branch just like that and then ease it into a position now. So now what I've done is I've pushed it a little bit as the season continues, I'll keep expanding that stick, getting a longer one essentially, and pushing it further and further. And what I'm going to do now is paint the tree. This is a product called uh, Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard. Uh, this is a totally organic based product that's made out of like plants, things like that. So it does a couple different things. First of all, it's going to protect this tree from burning. Now, I'm only gonna do a little bit now since I don't have a brush and I'm <laughs> gonna do it ridiculously with this. But all you want to do is you just want to dab it on all of the trunk. The idea behind this is that in the beginning stages of this tree, there's not going to be enough leaf growth to protect it from the sun. The other thing I'm going to make sure I do is actually paint it right on top of any of the cuts that I made on this tree. That'll help heal them over better, stop any sort of rotting, any insects from getting any bad ideas, essentially. Now, you would ideally paint this entire tree, but it's going to be raining in just a day or two. So I'm not going to bother until after the rain because it takes a little bit to cure. And over time, this will just break down and just go into the soil. It's not a big deal since it's organic. There's nothing like toxic in there. And with that, we're done, guys. We have a spacer in here moving the branches. We fully pruned it. We dug an insanely big hole for this multi-year tree. And I will be painting this over the weekend. I'm very happy with how this went. It was a lot of work. I think it'll pay off in the long run. Plan on doing a lot more fruit tree content over these next couple years as I get more trees in. But this is the first major in-ground tree that I've put, and I'm very excited to see how it does. Hopefully this multi-year hole pays off. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and what you guys want to see next.